Don't rush, slow touch, brown and white not the best way to get three points but at least it was three points i think if i had a shot every time i said move the ball quicker you eggs i think i would have been drunk on the floor hello and welcome to another episode of holly Hotspurs. and today i'll be talking about that one new win against burnley that probably sent us all to sleep if you're new to the channel, please remember to like on this video, comment what you thought of the game below, and hit that subscribe button. Considering we haven't won an away game at Burnley since 2017, I was like, I feel like Dr. Tottenham is going to prowl its head tonight. It almost did, but luckily for us, we did manage to secure three points. Starting lineup came out, and we saw Larissa in goal, like Doherty, Hobie, Dyer, my great friend, and Davies in that left back position obviously any combo we kind of come out with recently with our defense gives me heebie jeebies but i was feeling a little bit okay with toby in that back four then saw hoiberg in his sitting role along with sissoko the domble sitting in just in front of him lucas son and kane up top i was intrigued to see this sonny kane link up play once again and the fact that the domble was starting like i keep saying i think the domble as he's playing more regularly and getting more games underneath his belt he's properly showing his true talent so i was intrigued to see how he perform again tonight and for once i think to myself it's an all right start in 11 i must admit it's a force to be reckoned with and the fact that our bench is looking pretty healthy as well actually excites me because i thought it was bloody christmas because that never normally happens in a top squad we had the likes of bale regular the celso lamela and vinicius to come off of the bench we'll see heart on in there as well and we had Rodon also in there, which was quite intriguing to see. I feel this meant that Jose was trying to seal the game out early and then maybe bring him on just to tighten things up. Since Ndombele has formed his place in the start 11, I think he's playing better and better each week. And this was kind of highlighted in the first couple of minutes when he managed to get out of a tricky space that we all kind of thought of, how is he going to get out of that? And he managed to do so and finishes it off with a nutmeg. So that was promising to see straight away. Two minutes in, we also see Kane try and have a shot on goal after the ball was played from long pinger specialist Toby Alderweireld to Harry Kane. Harry Kane touches the ball down as a shot but unfortunately for us it does go well wide. In the 12th minute we see Toby Alderweireld goes down as Ashley Barnes uses his sharpened elbow shall we say and hits him in the face and manages to make him have a little bleedy patch on his eyebrow. Now it's kind of Hoiberg-esque in the sense that he has to get some treatment and have his head wrapped up like Mr. Bumpy or Mr. Men. But re-watching that replay, there's lots of people saying it wasn't intentional. I'm sorry, mate. When you go in with your elbow like that and the fact that VAR hasn't even questioned to look at it and the man doesn't even get a booking, let alone a telling off, you've got to be asking some questions. For me, I think he knows where Toby is. Toby's watching the ball bang straight into his face. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I'm going to get hella pissed off. But I think he definitely deserved a telling off even a booking. In the 20th minute, however, the ball does hit the back of our own net. But luckily for us, we have a very high line tonight and it was working very well with the communications and Barnes is very much offside, so it's still nil-nil. In the 21st minute though, we get very lucky as Pope doesn't redistribute the ball very well and it ends up at the feet of Sonny. And then Sonny is then kabamped from behind and we are awarded a free kick. This free kick is then taken by Davies and I think it ends closer to the corner flag than it does the goal. Davies tonight equals pissing me off constantly. I, I just don't think he was really all in it tonight. His distribution of crosses into the box, if a cross even met the box, and if it did meet the box, it met the head of a Burnley player. He was just not very good tonight. There's a lot of long balls throughout the whole game, and I can kind of understand why we were trying to do that, because we clearly couldn't move the ball quick along the floor. What's your best next thing? Hit the ball long and hope. And we did do that an awful lot of the time. That was my one pet peeve tonight. Honestly, I have never seen us move the ball so slow and it suited Burnley so well because they didn't really have to do anything. I think our movement off the ball was pretty poor as well. We were just very static. Because Burnley packed so many men behind the ball, which I kind of thought they would do anyway, it just meant that we had to move the ball quicker to create spaces here, there and everywhere and for players to run into. But that was just non-existent. I think we were moving the ball slower than snails and that's not me exaggerating. I'm not going to lie, I think I fell asleep in the first half. There wasn't really a lot to talk about. We hadn't even had a shot on goal. And I think Burnley had a lot more shots on goal. I mean, they weren't great shots on goal. They were a bit like P-rollers, but at least they were getting their stats up. And we kind of start the second half, pretty much like we start the first half, 
and the consistency of the first half, which is very slow and very boring. Jose tries to mix it up when he takes off Lucas and brings Lamela on. Lamela, the guy that likes to nip at people's ankles, and I thought it would just jeer us up a little bit. Sadly, it kind of didn't. I mean, I wrote this on my book. Like, I mean, kind of sums it up. 65 minutes have gone, and we still hadn't had a shot on target. In the 69th minute, Dyer thinks he's in a bloody playground and tries to flick the ball over the head of a running Burnley player. I can't remember what his name was, I think it was Woods, but he whacks it and luckily for us it hits him in the arm and we are awarded a free kick for handball, but my god, Dyer gets away with murder there. If he wasn't hit on the arm, he would be straight on goal, we'd probably end up being 1-0 down. So Dyer, great mate. On the 70th minute, after that happens, Burnley are awarded a corner. Ball is whipped in. I don't really know what Lloris is doing. I think for most of the game, Lloris was pretty commanding in his area, managing to pick balls out of the sky, off the floor, after P rollers from Burnley. But this time, he's caught unaware. And who's the man to get it off the line? Harry Kane. Take a look at this. This kind of just sums it up. Our striker is on our back line defending a bloody corner. That just sums up the whole game. The 73rd minute, I thought we were actually finally going to get a goal when the Dombele picks up the ball and plays a lovely pass through to Sonny. Sonny runs on, but unfortunately for us, he takes too many touches and Burnley are managing to get a block in, which means that the ball fumbles out for a corner. Although, from this corner, a little bit of magic happens. Take a look at it. On the 75th minute, I have finally awoken from my beauty sleep and now I need a lot of it. Of 75 minutes and we see Sonny get on the score sheet. Sonny and Kane are literally inseparable at the moment. The ball comes in from Lamela, hits Kane's head, he flicks it onto Sonny and then Sonny heads it back post in the corner in the top of the net. I think that's definitely something that's been worked on the training ground. We've seen that at the moment partners in crime, they always find each other over the pitch and once again they've saved us again. Their partnership has actually managed to link up and do the business so it's 1-0 Tottenham after 75 minutes. I mean first shot on target, first goal, I mean that's a good stat to have in it. We then see Lo come on for Ndombele and I think Ndombele's had a very good game. I think he's the only one that's actually managed to pick a killer pass out here and there. Other than that we've kind of played the ball sidewards and backwards. Although I joke about it, it was like we had 11 Harry Winkses on the pitch at some points, but Ndombele for me I thought was the better player of all of them. We then saw four added minutes and you're thinking to yourself, this is Tottenham. Dr Tottenham will be ready soon. I was thinking, oh god, we're going to drop points once again like we did against West Ham, but luckily for us we didn't. We then see Roden come on 91st minute for Sonny in his Premier League debut. I think it was just to kind of make sure that everything was compact going into the last dying minutes of the game. As we know, they tend to be the minutes that kind of hurt us badly. So it was great to see Roden get on the pitch, even if it was for a couple of minutes. And then the final whistle goes. And I'm happy because, okay, it was the most boringest game I've probably watched. But if you said to me at the start of the game, you get three points at the end of it, I would have snapped your hand off. So it's great. The fact that draws are happening all around us and we've actually got three points on the table, which is pretty decent. I mean, we could... Hindsight is a wonderful thing. We could say if we won last week, we'd probably be at the top of the table, but that's been and gone now, so we have to move on. But not the best of games, I must admit. I did get 77 winks in before that goal went in, so yeah. Not our best performance, but it shows even for not playing our best, we can actually still manage to get on a score sheet and manage to get three points. So again, thanks again for everyone for watching. Unluckily for me, bail. Didn't come on when I wore my new shirt, but we move. Who cares? We've got three points. We move on. We look forward. And remember, till I see you next time, come on, you Spurs.